is looking at chapter UV visible spectroscopy in that we have learned all the theory. Uh, now we are in instrumentation. Instrumentation, we saw three different types of instruments and we have seen already the different sources of electromagnetic radiation. Now moving on, we have also seen some types of uh, um, wavelength selectors. We are done with uh, filters. Now today we will see what are gratings. Gratings, you can compare the gratings with uh, those computer disk, CD disk on which you we used to uh, purchase songs, movies and all that. So basically what it has is, it is a polished surface on one side. On that polished surface you have successive grooves on them. Okay. And because of these grooves which are very small in size, uh, micro size, uh, it causes diffraction of light. The most effective one in converting polychromatic light to monochromatic light. It has got resolution of plus minus 0.1 nanometer. Could be achieved by using gratings. They are commonly used in spectrophotometers. In yesterday lecture we saw that in spectrophotometers you get a wide beam of light or a broad spectra from which you need to select the wavelength of, for your analysis. The gratings are of two types, diffraction gratings and transmission gratings. Let us first start with diffraction gratings. Uh, more refined dispersion of light is obtained by means of this diffraction gratings. When you say refined dispersion, it means the wavelengths are distinctly uh, dispersed. These consist of large number of parallel lines or grooves about 15,000 to 30,000 inch ruled on a highly polished surface of aluminium. These gratings are replica made from master grating by coating original master grating with epoxy resin and are removed after setting. I will tell you what this process is. The original polished surface of aluminium with this much density of lines grooved on it. Okay. So it is very difficult to produce. So suppose uh, for aluminium, let us use certain color say, I hope the yellow color will be visible to you. This is aluminium surface. And these are very fine grooves present on the surface. I really hope you understand what are grooves. Okay, so everything is highly polished. The surface is highly polished. And such type of grooves are present on the surface of aluminium. Let me improve the appearance of it so it will look like grooves only. Okay, now this kind of surface is very, uh, you can say it requires time and efforts to produce it. So what they do, they will coat this with say epoxy resin. Okay, epoxy resin you can consider that as some type of gum. Okay, they will coat everything with epoxy resins and the gum is allowed, epoxy gum, epoxy resin is allowed to settle. When it is allowed to settle and when that say epoxy resin which is green part over here is separated from the aluminium surface, now it will have the uh, complementary grooves on its surface. The epoxy the resin which is now hardened have the grooves on its surface after separation. So it is like making a replica of the master copy which is the original aluminium surface. Then that epoxy resin is coated with aluminium so it behaves exactly as uh, diffraction gratings. 
Now, to make the surface reflective, a deposit of aluminum is made on the surface, which I just mentioned. In order to minimize the greater amounts of scattered radiation and appearance of unwanted radiation of other spectral orders, gratings are blazed to uh, to concentrate the radiation into single order. Now, uh, when we say gratings are blazed, basically they mean to say they are heated. Okay, so. If you observe this diagram, I hope you will remember something from your B farm. See, there are many parallel rays of light coming and hitting the surface of the grating. Okay, now after reflection, this is one ray. Okay, so this is blaze angle. Okay, note that incident angle I and this diffracted light angle is different this is angle r and this is blaze angle see this is blaze okay this is inclined surface you can call it as blaze so uh, if you draw a perpendicular over here on the surface the angle made to the original perpendicular drawn on the surface of the grating is called as blaze angle okay anyway the second type of grating is transmission grating it is similar to diffraction grating but diffraction takes place instead of reflection reflection produces refraction produces reinforcement that is constructive interference this occurs when radiation transmitted through the grating reinforces with partially refracted radiation basically instead of getting reflected the incident beam is getting passed through the surface what are advantages of gratings gratings gives higher and linear dispersion compared to prism monochromator it can be used over wide range of wavelengths the ratings can be constructed with materials like aluminium which is resistant to atmospheric moisture it is it, it provides light of very narrow wavelength and most importantly there is no loss of energy due to absorption by the the device itself this comparison between prisms and gratings the gratings monochromator comes sample holders also called as covets the cells or covets are used for handling of liquid samples they hold the liquid samples the cell may either be rectangular or cylindrical in nature so they may come in different shapes and sizes in study in uv region the cells are prepared from quartz and fused silica whereas color corrected fused glass is used for visible region now color corrected means the glass itself should not absorb any wavelength even the blue or green you must have observed that many times a, a glass window or even the glass of spectacles that many people use they have uh, inherent blue or green tinge okay so that tinge those compounds causing that tinge those compounds are removed from the glass the surfaces of absorption cell must be kept scrupulously clean no fingerprints or blotches should be present on the cell because if such marks are present on the surface of the cell it will cause the reflection absorption diffraction all those phenomena for electromagnetic radiation it will cause uh, it will cause error in the reading cleaning is carried out washing with distilled water or with dilute alcohol or acetone most of you must have seen the sample holders this is this is the one which is cubical in shape the sample holder the most important part of the machine is detectors detectors are devices which converts light energy into electrical energy or electrical signals that are displayed on the readout devices or they are the inputs for the readout devices the transmitted radiation 
falls on the detector which determines the intensity of radiation absorbed by the sample now we are interested in these three types of detectors first one is barrier layer cells it is also called as photovoltaic cell second is photo tubes they are also called as photo emissive tubes and third one is modification of the second one which is photo multiplier tube now there are other examples of detectors also there are photo diodes there are bolometers there are thermistor gauli detector now few of them we are going to study in ir also now what are the properties of ideal detectors it should give quantitative response quantitative means one say one unit of uh, the incident uh, transmitted radiation producing one unit of response so there should be a linear relationship or a fixed relationship instead of saying linear relationship i should say there is fixed relationship between uh, between the the transmitted light and the response that is produced by the detector then it should give high sensitivity and low noise level the sensitivity should be high and noise that is unwanted signal should be as low as possible it should have short response time the moment uh the analyte is present in the path should immediately give the full full signal it should not give the signal slowly okay it should provide signal or response quantitative to wide spectrum radiation received if it is not possible if the last point is not true for a different wavelength you will require different detector let's start with the one first one barrier layer cell or photovoltaic cell now let's first see the diagram the thing you must have observed is it has mainly have three layers there is a ring present at the top and ring present at the but when this is the cross section we are looking at let us see all what are these all three different three four different layers it consists of a metallic base plate a this is the base plate of iron or aluminium this is made up of either iron or aluminium and it acts as electrodes over which a thin layer of selenium p is deposited now although in the diagram the layer looks big in practice this layer is very thin okay this layer acts as semi conducting surface which is involved in immobilization of high energy electrons upon this layer is fine silver layer which is made up of either silver or gold this layer is spread and it acts as electrode the upper layer which acts as this acts as collecting ring and between layer of selenium and silver is present hypothetical barrier c the barrier is hypothetical so quickly revise what all things are there first layer it is made up of iron or aluminium above that you have very thin selenium layer above that you have a, a fine layer of silver or gold and above that you have a collecting ring now let's see working what happens when a radiant ray energy is made incident on the selenium layer, selenium layer b it results in the excitation of electrons from the same which passes through hypothetical barrier layer and are collected on the ring e now 
this layer d layer is extremely thin layer how extremely thin it is that electromagnetic radiation right uh, pass through it and directly falls on selenium layer the moment it falls on selenium layer electrons are ejected electrons transfer travel to this transparent layer and are collected on the collector ring okay this causes a potential difference between the electrodes that is this electrode and the base plate electrode okay so it causes potential difference between electrodes and if external circuit is complete the current flows which is major of radiant energy falling on the selenium layer the current can be amplified and measured so if by some means if you can connect these two these two ends to a galvanometer galvanometer will show you the deflection the moment electromagnetic radiation falls on this selenium layer so basically what is happening when electromagnetic radiation falls on selenium layer the electrons in the selenium layer get collected on the ring and if this is connected to a base plate electrons will flow in this direction and current will flow in this direction this is the now this current flowing will be extremely extremely small so you need to add amplification circuit need to add amplification circuit to amplify the signal i hope you have understood now the current output depends on wavelength of the light falling on the selenium layer shorter the wavelength more is the energy more is the current flowing the working range is 380 nanometer to 780 nanometer so it is mostly in visible range and some part of it almost only 20 nanometers in say uv range and so we can say that it if it is covering most of the visible light its sensitivity is similar to human eye but our advantages it is cheap easy to construct used in the cheapest calorimeter and flame photometers calorimeters and flame photometer what is disadvantage it is lack of sensitivity over photo tubes and pmt photo multiplier tubes which we are going to study successively so next is photo tubes or photo emissive tube let us zoom into the diagram observe the diagram you will understand its working okay i assume that you have seen all the parts let's see the another schematic representation this is cathode over here which is also called as photo cathode it is called as photo cathode which is because it is covered in a photo sensitive material this is collector electrode anode it is going to collect all the electrons and this is connected to a circuit it is connected to a circuit let's see what happens okay it consists of a evacuated glass tube with photo cathode and a collector anode the surface of the photo cathode is coated with a layer of elements like cesium silver oxide or mixture of them when radiant in photo sensitive cathode electrons are emitted which are attracted to anode causing current to flow more sensitive it is more sensitive compared to barrier less cells and therefore it is widely used so next i got detector is photo multiplier tube we can say that this photo multiplier tube is modification of photo tubes or photo emissive tubes the principle is detector is that multiplication of photo electrons by secondary emission of electrons 
in vacuum tube a primary photocathode is fixed which receives radiation from the sample so this is the first electrode the photon coming from the energy wavelength coming from the sample falls on it and it em it emits photo electron now vacuum primary photo cathode is fixed which receives radiation from the sample some light uh, some uh, 8 to 10 dynodes are fixed each with increasing potential of 70 to 100 volts higher than the preceding one in meaning this dynode is kept at higher voltage than this one the next is kept at still higher voltage this is still higher higher and so on at the end you have anode okay near the last anode is fixed an anode or electron collector electrode photo multiplier is extremely sensitive to light and is best uh best served where weaker or low radiation is used so this is the diagram of the instrument now instrument design overall depending on the monochromatic whether it is filters or dispersing device used to isolate and transmit a narrow beam of radiant energy from the incident light determines whether the instrument is classified as photometer or spectrophotometer obviously filters are used it is photometer if some dispersing device like prism or grating is used it is it will be called as spectrophotometer spectrophotometers used used here detects the percentage transmittance of light radiation when light of certain intensity and frequency range is passed through the sample so in spectrophotometer what is being detected how much of the light is incident okay how much is the light incident on the sample and how much of it is transmitted okay its percentage okay so this is been determined if you note carefully this is very similar to determination of percent transmittance okay both can be single beam and double beam optical system that is photometer and spectrophotometer both can be double beam or single beam this is if you uh, understand what is single beam and double beam you will understand this is a single beam uh, if filter you used we will call it as single beam photometer and if monochromatic is used it is single beam spectrofluor spectrophotometer so you have a source of light it first passes through filter or monochromatic uh there is shutter to block and allow the passage of the electromagnetic radiation at a time you can either take either a reference cell or sample cell you cannot take both in at a time for absorbance okay so here you will have say suppose reference cell so the reference cell will give you p0 value then you have photo detector amplifier and redox system when sample cell is in the path of electromagnetic radiation you will get power of transmitted light now <clears throat> observe these two diagrams there is one common thing that a single beam is split into two beams you will observe that a collimating system a lens is used here to separate two beams from the single source okay so first the source is converted to mono uh, 
कन्वर्ट इन टू सिंगल वेव लेंथ एंड देन इट इज स्प्लिट इन टू टू वेम्स यूजिंग कॉलिमिटिंग सिस्टम इन द अदर टाइप हाफ मिरर और रोटेटिंग हाफ मिरर आर यूज ओके दिस हैज अ ट्रांसपेरेंट एरिया एंड अ मिरर एरिया सो द ग्रे कलर एरिया इज मिरर एरिया एंड ट्रांसपेरेंट इज वेर एंड दिस इज रोटेटिंग वेरी फास्ट दिस इज रोटेटिंग वेरी फास्ट सो वेन ट्रांसपेरेंट एरिया इज इन फ्रंट ऑफ मोनोक्रोमेटर द लाइट विल पास थ्रू द सैम्पल वेन इट इज इन फ्रंट ऑफ मिरर इट विल पास थ्रू द रेफरेंस सेल ओके सो इन बोथ केसेस द ग्रिड मिरर विल डायरेक्ट रेडिएशन कमिंग फ्रॉम द रेफरेंस सेल एंड द सैम्पल सेल towards photo detector here only one photo detector is used and in this instrument there are photo detectors used are two both are now connected to first difference amplifier so this is amplifying the difference between the reference and the sample the difference is amplified here you have only amplifier this will give you a call this will give you this kind of signal the absorbance is more when sample is present and absorbance is less when the beam coming to amplifier is from reference that is when this path is followed you will get this reading less absorbance and when this path is followed you will get more absorbance i have understood both the diagrams now let's talk about single beam spectrophotometer light from the source is carried through the lens or through aperture pass through suitable filter after passing through filter the type of filter to be used is governed by the color of the solution that is we are selecting which is to be uh, selected for the analysis the sample solution to be analyzed is placed in cavities this is the representation of single instrument only it is using gratings instead of it is using grating instead of filters after passing through the solution the light strikes the surface of detector it may be barrier lasers or it may be photo tube and produces electric current the output of current is measured by deflection of needle deflection of the needle over a scale deflection of needle of light spot galvanometer or microammeter the meter is calibrated in terms of transmittance as well as optical density the readings of solution of both standard and unknown are recorded in optical density when we say optical density it is nothing but absorbance uh units after adjusting the instrument to a reagent blank so first we have to take reading for blank and then we will keep sample in it the single beam instrument looks like something like this you can see there are few knobs to adjust the wavelength and there is scale now double beam uv visible spectrophotometer double beam is the one in which two beams are formed in a space by either c a u shaped mirror called as beam splitter and beam chopper you can use one of it okay chopper is a device consisting of circular disc one third of the disc is opaque one third is transparent and one third is mirrored so when in normal scenario suppose light passes through it and suppose this chopper is rotating and if you will observe that at one instance there will be light 
passing through it when there is a transfer section exposed to it in case of when it is suppose mirror suppose mirror is in this region then the light will bounce off from the mirror and nothing will pass and there will be a black section will where nothing will pass nothing will be uh, nothing is going to the sample or reference so everything is blocked so the intensity in the reading you will get intensity of light will be maximum when it is passing through the reference then intensity will be comparatively less when it is passing through the sample and when it is passing it is falling on the black region it will be absolutely zero so the detector will detect intensity in this manner this is for sample uh, sorry this is for reference this is for sample and this is for black section of the upper uh this is the another by block diagram of it where two detectors are used this double beam instrument most of you must have seen this in your b farm lab if you happen to come in college uh in this semester let us see what happens we'll see the instrument that we have okay advantages of single and double beam spectrometer for single beam it is uh easy to construct easy to use and it is economical uh there is comparatively less uh, wear and tear of the instrument double beam has several advantages it facilitates rapid scanning over large wavelength you can take spectra of compounds in double beam very quickly as compared to single beam fluctuations due to radiation source are minimized because if there are fluctuation in the source it will affect equally the reference and standard so overall effect at the detector will be nullified it doesn't require adjustment of the transmittance at 0% and 100% at each wavelength at the beginning only you need to start you need to do it it gives a ratio of intensities of sample and reference beams simultaneously so it saves lot of time there are disadvantages of single beam any fluctuation in the intensity range so affects the absorbance continuous spectrum is not obtained cannot be obtained in double beam spectrophotometer construction is complicated and because of that complicated construction the cost of instrument increases it is expensive there are many other points of comparison this table i will give you i will provide you with this ppt and i'm uh giving that at home assignment so these are the references which we can use in the primary reference i suggest you use to refer skook then there is chatwal there is also a book called as yr sharma और इसमें से अगर कुछ भी नहीं पढ़ सकते हो सो देर इज बुक कस्तूरे महाजन यूज वॉल्यूम थ्री ओके विद दिस आई डिक्लेयर दैट दिस चैप्टर इज ओवर इफ यू हैव सम डाउट यू मे आस्क योर डाउट्स